Good morning. Today is Monday, December the 18th. The time right now is 7 minutes past 9 in the morning. And uh, let's do a bit of a recap as to what the market did on Friday last. And we can see that the Dow Jones Industrial Average basis, the micro e-mini S&P 500 futures has, uh, has continued to edge higher into new all-time high. And the high traded on Friday was 37,784, which is a, like I say, all-time high. Now, this market right now is very buoyant, but we can see that Price action has actually slowed down. We have seen possibly the slowdown in momentum that suggests that top side, maybe short term wise, could be quite limited going into the uh, Christmas holiday. We can see that the next target probably is about 38,228. Again, this is new uncharted territory. Nobody actually know where the peak is uh, for the time being. So uh, based on targets, we can see that there is a nearby target of 38,228. And uh, it's not that far away. And like I said, momentum is slowing down a little bit that could actually impact negatively the price action going into the holidays and into the year end so watch out for further gain but further gain could be quite limited in my opinion and uh in the s p 500 similarly the price uh action has not taken out the all-time high which was last traded on january the 4th uh 2022 and that level is 4808 and a quarter the high traded on uh, on Thursday, not Friday, uh, was at 4,791 and three quarters. So again, this is not very far away, just basically a, a, a whisker away, uh, so to say. So, but the market right now is struggling within this bracket of prices uh, at 4,765 and three quarter and 4,739.5. So we can see this very, very small uh, limited area of uh, resistance is putting up the last defense uh, before the all-time high can be actually be achieved. So we also see a slowdown of momentum after the initial rush up uh, after the Fed uh, uh, announced their pivot. So downside, I think it's still a possibility of a short-term pullback, uh, but again, uh, basis, uh, what we are seeing in the Dow as well as in the NASDAQ 100, momentum right now over the medium term is actually pretty strong, although short-term-wise, there is a bit of a slowdown in the momentum. And over in the NASDAQ 100, again, basis, the micro e-mini uh, uh, NASDAQ 100 futures, we are at an all-time high right now in the NASDAQ uh, uh, futures contract. The last traded high was 16,767 and a half. The high traded uh, last week uh, on Thursday is 16,885 and a half. So we can see prices has gone to an all-time high, although the cash market has not caught up yet. Uh, so this is actually telling us ahead. The momentum suggests that we probably will see higher prices going forward. And uh, the near by the nearby target as far as you can see is at 17,221 okay so again this is not that far away uh, we will have to wait for the cash index to catch up to the futures contract itself and over in Asia we can still see that the Japanese markets have still been struggling despite the pivot by the Federal Reserve should actually cause a similar run to the upside in the Nikkei 225 but so far we have not seen it in fact a high trader at 33,130 last week was actually traded the day before the FOMC meeting, which after that should actually cause uh, prices to go even higher as what we have seen um uh, globally uh, in reaction to the Fed pivot. But um, unfortunately, we don't see the same thing happening in the Nikkei 225. And this could be attributed largely to the tomorrow F, uh, uh, Bank of Japan's uh, meeting in which they are going to be deciding on their interest rates, although nobody expects them to change their posture for now. Uh, currently, the interest in Japan is negative 0.1%, which is the lowest among all the G7. In fact, uh, probably around the world, the only central bank that still maintain negative interest rate is the Bank of Japan. And that has been the case since 2006. And that has been causing the, uh, the decline in the Japanese yen relative to the, all the major currencies. And as a result, the Japanese yen has been the source of funding globally. And a lot of people have been borrowing Japanese yen and taking the proceeds to reinvest them into equity markets. And some of that has actually gone into the Japanese equity market that caused the Japanese market to actually rally to a 33-year high, which was last traded almost a month ago at 33,870. But since then, the market has been pulling back. And if there's going to be any change in the posture of the Bank of Japan's uh, uh, thinking, uh, as far as the interest rate is concerned, that could be a negative for the equity markets in Japan. Because like I said, Japan, the Japanese has been a source of funding and any increase in the cost of funding is going to cause uh, 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 a, a possibly an unwinding of position in the Japanese equity market. So look out for that. And that's happening tomorrow uh, as we are talking because nobody knows exactly what time they will release the decision because they have always been very mysterious about the timing of their release. And uh, we will have to watch out tomorrow's equity markets in Japan. And over in Hong Kong, 
Hong Kong has benefited from the uh, pivot by the Federal Reserve. Prices would look at one stage was almost at a point of breaking down uh, further. Uh, but the low traded so far this year is 15980 And that has been the case. The, the, the Hong Kong market has been so weak and it has been falling and falling and falling for ages right now. And this uh, last week, we saw a bounce at to 17000 So this is actually quite interesting because this bounce here uh, happened right after the Fed pivot. Uh, but however, it has been kept below the October close, which is at 17025 which in turn was actually not that far away from the November close at 17,073. So taken together, uh, these two levels here could be seen to be a cap uh, 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 that may actually prevent the, hang the Hang Seng Index futures to go any higher. So this morning, we see a bit of a pullback, uh, currently trading at 16,690. And we could see that uh, if the inability to close above the November close could actually see a continuation of the fall in the Hong Kong equity markets versus the Hang Seng futures. And over in the dollar, the dollar has been a victim of the Fed pivot because if the Fed starts to cut interest rate, it is seen to be a negative. Naturally, we can see that yield in the 10 years treasury across the board in the treasury market has been falling very sharply. In fact, the 10 years has fallen back below the 4%. Now, just two months back, we can see that the yield in the 10 years was at 4%, 5%. Okay, So in the space of just barely a slightly over a month, we can see that the yield on the US Treasury has all been falling across the board with the 10 years now trading at 3.95. Okay, uh, last I checked. So we can see that the dollar has been falling also and that the dollar index as a measurement of the uh, strength of the dollar itself has, has gone down uh, to as low as 102. So we can see that this 102 level is the lowest we have seen uh, since October last year. So this is actually going to be the momentum going forward. Any kind of rebounds in the dollar could be seen to be technical because if the Fed actually pivots, uh, that could be a negative for the dollar going forward. So the uh, what we are looking at uh, is currently this level at 103.29. Uh, that could be a barrier to higher prices going forward. And if the dollar seems to be rebounding somewhat, of course, that will see the, uh, the euro dollars and all the principal currency all pulling back. And as what we are seeing right now, the, the euro dollar has managed to do a double top here. Uh, last week high on Thursday was 110, okay? Barely above 110, and which is uh, almost in line with the previous high here uh, traded at the end of November. Okay, we can see that this double top here is probably capping the, uh, the current run in the euro dollar. And we can see the pullback as the as the dollar index starts to rebound in uh, on on Friday, so we can see that right now where the market is is actually hovering at the November close. So it will be very interesting where the euro dollar close going into December. Okay, I'm not going to do it, uh, towards the end of December. So the level is 108.90. Uh, okay, so we want to see how the market reacts here. Uh, if the market close below this level, it, we will see further losses ahead. But if not, then I think the market is actually primed to go higher assuming the dollar continue to slide, okay? So sterling wise, we can see that sterling has actually managed a marginal high relative to what we saw in the euro dollar, which has a double top. So we can see the, uh, the sterling is actually on a relative basis stronger than euro, euro dollar. We were higher at 127.94, and although prices have been pulling back, but this is basically quite a bullish development for the sterling. Uh, the November close logically will be the, where the support is at 126.20. We will see if we can get a reaction from there. Now, dollar yen, like I say, has been falling and falling for ages on the back of a different uh, interest rate differential between the Japanese banks, uh, the, the Bank of Japan and the rest of the central banks. But we can see that that has been the case uh, for, uh, for a while going into this year. Uh, trading at one stage, the dollar yen was almost looking that it will break above last year's high at one um, and 151.94. So we can see that the high traded uh, did not quite break up above this level. The high traded this year is 151.91. So it did not break the 151.94 high of last year. So the prices has been falling back and largely due to an unwinding of positions from those who have been very long the dollar yen. And we can see that that sentiment has carried forward now that the Fed has signal that it's going to pivot that added more fuel to those who are still holding on to a long dollar yen position meaning to say that they are more likely to be cutting the position and maybe even going short so what we'll be 
uh, interested to see how much more it can rebound. So right now we can see dollar rebounding a little bit, but the rebound so far in the dollar year has been quite muted from a low of 140.95. It has been doing very little. The currently is trading at 142.30 there, there about. So very, very little rebound and the, uh, the bias is to the downside. Aussie dollars uh, continue to strengthen. Uh, we can see that this, uh, the Aussie dollars very much like the sterling has been benefiting from uh, the weakening of the dollar. Uh, we can see that the high traded last week on Thursday was 0 0.6730 thereabout. And this is a pocket of prices that need to be overcome. The level is 0 0.6712 to 0 0.6740. Only a close above this level can see higher prices going forward. Okay, immediately, I think there is this very minor uh, pocket of support here. We will see, uh, seen so far, the prices seems to be holding up very, very well here. Maybe a dip back into this pocket of prices may actually cause prices to rally one more time. And over in the dollar Canadian, of course, if you have seen the dollar index chart, uh, this chart does looks a very, very similar. We can see dollar continues to slide, although we don't see the rebound like what we saw in the dollar index. But I think the dollar Canadian is probably geared for a rebound as well, assuming the dollar index continues to maintain its momentum going forward uh, in the rebound. Uh, the low so far traded on Friday is 133.50 and uh, uh, currently trading at 133.80 there about. Very little rebound, but I think there's a bit of a potential for further gains in the dollar uh, versus Canadian on the short term. And as far as precious metal is concerned, we can see that gold prices has actually reacted positively after the Fed pivot uh, signal to a high of $2,047.94. But since then, it has been losing momentum, trading back uh, lower. And... Uh, Technically speaking, uh, the high traded here at $2,149 uh, $2 or thereabout, we can see that this high here has created a big pullback. And this pullback does look very, very deep. But I uh, technically, I don't think that the pullback is done yet. Uh, I think there's further potential for further losses ahead. In a three, If we get a three-wave decline, the market could be targeting somewhere around $1,870, perhaps to even lower at $1,830. So based on what we are seeing so far, there's a potential for a $1,000 pullback from the height of $2,149. So if the market close this year or in December below $1,960, that would be a danger uh, signaling that we could see further losses into January of next year. Okay, Over in the sale Silver, we've seen uh, basically a replica of what we see in the gold markets here. A high traded at $25.91. Although this is nowhere near the all-time high, but this is also showing us that silver has also benefited from the pool in the uh, in the gold market. But since then, the market has been pulling back. And so far, the rebound uh, in the aftermath of the uh, uh, Fed pivot uh, only managed to see silver prices trading to a high of $24.29 and it's also coming, uh, it's also pulling back. Although this rally has been very, very strong, but based on momentum, based on pattern, there's a possibility of a three-wave pullback as well. And if we do get that, we will probably will see uh, sub uh, $20 per ounce. And that could be a good buying position, okay, in my opinion. And in the oil side, we can see oil market uh, continue to rebound from the low of $67.68 yeah, basis the WTI uh, traded uh, in the CFD contract. You can see that high was actually traded midweek of last week. And uh, market has made, managed to rebound to Friday's close uh, to near fi near Friday's high at seventy two dollars and forty two cents, and this morning we have a bit of a bounce up even higher to seventy two dollars and sixty one cents, and this is actually playing up quite well with the potential for crude oil to actually test the seventy six dollars per barrel. But I think that's all it can do because the November close is going to be the hard cap uh, that is going to be preventing higher prices unless the price can close December above the $76.40 uh, uh, closing on, in November. So that is uh, laying the groundwork for further losses in crude oil, at least in the short term. Now, as far as digital asset is concerned, we can see that Bitcoin continue to struggle. Uh, it has benefited also from the uh, FOMC uh, meeting. We can see that prices was hovering about 40000 Forty thousand uh, dollars, and it rushed up to forty three thousand four hundred and thirty dollars there about before pulling back. So this pullback does appear to be a three wave pattern, and if it's so, then we are looking at perhaps a test of thirty nine thousand to as low as thirty eight thousand. So anywhere that's lower it would be great because this market right now is is deeply in bull market territory and its further gain is likely to be the case going forward into 2024. So this is all I have for you for today. In the meantime, you take care and I'll come back to you tomorrow with an update. Bye-bye.